Hey, what's going on guys? Pete with Auto Repair Tips. First off, I want to apologize for some of the audio. It's going to be a little bit loud in here today. We have a lot going on. For those of you that didn't know, this is a live working shop. All the cars I bring in here are actual customer cars. None of these cars are staged. I'm not working in my driveway. I'm not working in my backyard garage. These are actual customer cars. I don't pre-brake the bolts. I don't set things up to make it look good on camera. If I have issues, you're gonna see it most of the time. Now, I do cut through some of the boring stuff, but then I explain to you, hey, if I see something hard, this is a level three, four, five. All right, guys, that being said, I'm working on a 15 Dodge Ram. Customer's complaint, it's got 90,000 miles on it, and every time he hits the brake, the front end shimmies, and the brake pedal shimmies. And for those of you that didn't know, when you feel a pulsating brake pedal like this, a lot of times it could be just a warped rotor. So in this video, we're gonna check out the front and the rear brakes and see what's going on. And that's what I mean by the audio. Please excuse it. Let's get into the video. All right guys, the first thing I'm gonna do is get a set of gauges. These measure your brakes. As obvious, the green is good, yellow is time for concern, red is replace. This is one of the easiest way to check them. These brakes measure out at 530 seconds. So actually they're good, but he's feeling excessive vibration in the front end when he stops. And feeling the rotor, there's a lot of grooves in here. The front end was tight. I drove the front end and already checked it. I did not see anything wrong with the front end at all. All the bushings look good. And depending on how hard he drove this, it just could be a bad set of rotors. He said he's been 90,000 miles with this truck. So we're gonna do the pads and the rotors up front. And when I was talking to the customer, he stated that he wanted Dodge parts. Did not want any kind of aftermarket part on here. I'm okay with that but it's a lot more expensive to go with Dodge parts. There are a lot of good quality aftermarket parts out there that you can get and save yourself a ton of money. They all come with lifetime warranties. Just gotta be careful which ones you buy. So if you look right in here, you can see those pads are pretty fat. 530 seconds is really good. But if you look at the rotor, I'm trying to show you, see, trying to get a good view on it. If you look at the rotor, you can see there's grooves all through here and there's a big lip right here all right guys let's move on to the back before i get back into the video i want to show you some fabrication we're doing we put this work body on and we're trying to put that bumper over there and somebody had put an aftermarket trailer hitch on it we're having to cut and fabricate just to get this bumper on so what we're going to do is once he knocks some plates off both sides We're gonna set the bumper back up there, line it up, re-weld brackets to the existing trailer hitch to make it fit here. Drill holes in here and use bumper bolts and it bolts along those holes right there. All right, let's get back to the brakes. All right, we'll take the same gauges. Let's measure this one out. Let's see what we got here. This one measures out at 430 seconds. That does pass state inspection. And you can look here, you can see just starting to get a wear pattern on here. You can actually put your hand on it and feel the out around this. I don't even need to mic these. So on this one here, the emergency brakes are built in behind the rotor. So let me go ahead and get that off and let's look at those two. Let's make sure they're good. All right, the caliper is held on with tens. And we're going to pry this one off. All right. It doesn't come off by hand. Just get a pry bar. Go in between here and just slowly pry it off. If you're gonna be reusing the calipers, don't let them hang, it's not good for the rubber brake lines. If you can safely set it on something, just do that. If you can't, get a wire tie and tie it up. You still have plenty of meat there. 
but with the vibration that he's feeling, and if you feel the rotors, you can definitely see they're fucked up. I don't even have to mic this one to tell it. That's going to be his pulsating brake pedal right here. This is some of the noise I was talking about that you're going to be hearing once in a while through this video. So I apologize for that. All right, we're going to take the caliber bracket off now. And that's held on with a 21 millimeter bolt. So you'll need a 21 and a swivel. Just makes it a little bit easier. If you look right here, you can see the blue Loctite. That's medium strength. Make sure you go back with new. There's a keeper right here. Before you take the rotor off, you have to remove this keeper. Make sure you go back with that. If I ever get it off, I'll show you what the hell it looks like. All right. All right, if you can't tap it off with a hammer, get a slide hammer. This thing is probably about 70 years old. It has been around since the shop has been around. Boom. If you look right inside here, you can see there's no lip. It's just rusted. They were rusted together. Looking at the emergency brakes, they don't look bad at all, actually. They look pretty clean. So I'll probably clean them up and we can reuse these. But this is probably why he felt vibration in the brake pedal between the rust and the rotor being out around. It was probably heating up after he drove it a while, so when he applied the brake, the brake pedal started pulsating. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and price out front pads and rotors and rear pads and rotors. He's got 90,000 miles on it. He was feeling vibration in the front end and in the brake pedal. He does a lot of traveling, so he wants to be safe. But he wants factory parts, like I told you earlier, so we're gonna price them out. I'm gonna do a comparison. I'm gonna price out aftermarket and new, and let's just see what the price difference is. All right, be back in a minute. All right, so after I called the dealership, and got prices in the aftermarket and explained to the customer that the aftermarket parts have a lifetime warranty. The dealership parts did not have a lifetime warranty. And there was about $300 difference. He had decided to go with the aftermarket. It's a no brainer. This is for the rear and this is for the front. I'll put links in the description below to the parts that were used in this video. Anytime you purchase something through any of those links, a small portion helps the channel and I appreciate that. All right, let's get them on the car. All right, guys, we're getting ready to install the new parts. All rotors come with a coating on it, keeps it from rusting. So make sure you clean it off really good. After you get it cleaned off, try to keep your hands off it. You don't want to put oily handprints back on your clean rotor. So clean it off best you can and don't touch it no more. All right. All right, go ahead and put your caliber bracket on. And make sure you put Loctite on your bolts. Use the blue kind, the medium strength. Make sure you use the new hardware. Always keep your work surface as clean as possible when you're doing this. All right, it's time to put the brakes on. Take just a little bit of caliper grease, stick it on the slide right here. Doesn't take a whole lot, just a little bit. We're gonna slide this one on the same way. A little trick on doing this, take a flathead screwdriver and where the brake slides up under the bracket, if you just put it at the end and take a little twist on it, not much, just a little bit, tap it. It's a lot easier than trying to fight it by hand. But when you're doing it, just do a little twist. You don't want to bend the bracket. You just want to kind of move it just a little bit. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to push in the caliper piston. This is what your caliper tool looks like. This is from Orion Motor Tech. They actually sent me this tool and asked me to make a video on it. And it's actually a pretty good little tool. I've been using it a whole lot. It works just as good as a snap-on. And it is three quarters the price of snap-on. It just goes between the caliper and the piston. You turn the center nut just till it gets tight. And when you're doing this, this piston should move freely. There should be no restriction. If you're doing it and you can't hardly turn this piston in, you've got a problem somewhere. It's either in your caliper or your brake line. This one seems to be doing just fine. True story. I had a customer did his own brakes and he brought me the vehicle 
because he was hearing a grinding noise after he did the brakes. And I took off the front tire and I started looking at the brakes. He literally put him in backwards. He had this metal part going against the rotor and the pad going out this way. Never have I seen that before. But that will cause a grinding noise. I will give you that. All right, once it gets tight up in there good, you go all the way with it. But you have new pads, so you need all you can get. It's tight now, you're done. Back it off a little bit, pull it out, and we're just about done. Make sure you check your slides. I already did earlier. You gotta make sure they slide back and forth and they're not sticking. Sometimes these things are a pain in the ass. Get them lined up just perfect. Last thing to put on is this little keeper. Use a socket, stick it over here and just use your hand, tap it on. All right guys, this side is done. Basically it's a rinse and repeat for the front. I'm gonna get everything knocked out and go for our test drive and we'll see how it does. I'll catch you in a bit. All right guys, we're on our test drive. I took it up to a high speed, about 55 miles an hour. I hit the brakes, steering wheel didn't shake, didn't feel anything in the brake pedal. It's all good. Hey guys, I'm gonna give you a quick tip. If you're doing brakes at home, before you put that car in drive, make sure you pump the brakes three or four times and build that pedal back up. Because if not, you'll put it in drive or reverse, you'll give it the gas, you'll go to stop, and you won't have any brakes. Anytime you do brakes, you have to pump them back up before you take off. All right guys, that's it for this video. Appreciate you watching, catch you later.